Welcome back to an hour with Crowder with me, Crowder, your host. And I got a good ass guest today. I know I say that for a lot of good ass guests, but that's my little thing. Good ass guest. And I got Will Norris here, part of the socially conscious commune I mean TV. And he's gonna be talking to us a little bit about his journey as being mixed and how he plays a part in this whole race war that we have going on. If I missed anything, no, Make you're fine, and thank you for having me. Um, it's socially conscious TV, just all one word. Um, and yeah, I mean, I'm happy to be here. I'm excited to uh, be talking with you. A lot of people don't know we we go back 15 Way plus years, probably so. Like a flat on a Cadillac, <laughs> yeah. Baby. I think we was uh, maybe. I think I moved to Garland in sixth grade, and yep. we I went to Brandenburg, and that's where we started our, <laughs> our walking journey home. as friends, walking <laughs> home, yeah, from school. And Remember so, Jackie. I remember Jackie, <laughs> yeah. I remember all the uh, Chandra and oh Andrea Chandra, and all them back then. So, so I'm happy and I'm excited, and it's been a long time. So I'm glad to be here to catch up with you. Cool, cool. Yeah, I got um a bunch of fucking questions. Um, mainly about a couple things that you said online that <laughs> okay. I, I've, I, it's got a lot of foot traffic, a lot of foot yeah, traffic. So the thing with my Facebook page is, um. You know, I, I, I try to... Wait a minute, lift this up a little bit. Right here? Yep, right okay. here. Yep. What I try to do is I try to um, yep, you're good right there. see what other people have to say about certain topics. I know how I feel about certain things, but sometimes I just try to um, ask open-ended questions, and then people just flood the comments. Yeah, one one of them had like over a hundred fucking comments. <laughs> yeah, oh, no likes. <laughs> yeah, uh, I mean it had like a couple. Likes, yeah, like a couple was, likes. I don't I don't really give a fuck about the likes. No, I give a fuck yeah, about them the comments, like yeah. the conversation. Because like I was saying in my last interview, the art of conversation is dead. That's why right. I started this podcast because people are just like squirrel, and I'm like nobody knows how to like conversation really sit down. is so important. Um, it's something that I, I, I try to teach my daughter and I try to talk to my family about because uh, a lot of times, uh, even back, well, a lot of our family tradition is that we um, we don't talk about things. Yeah. And we don't, um, and we kind of look over problems and move on and we never really address things, you know. So I always promote that, like, let's communicate, let's talk. You always got to give that back and forth. Hell how yeah. are you feeling? How am I feeling? Let's see, are we agreeing? Are we disagreeing? Hell yeah. What, when, where, why? <laughs> you know what Exactly, I mean? for real, because, like I said, dead and it's because of this internet everybody's a keyboard warrior now yeah. everybody says something online throw the rock hide the hand you know and you know that's why i started this podcast because i just wanted to have conversation with real people not big time people that have to be politically correct because oh well this people these people fund me and i can't say anything about them and right. these people fund me and i can't say anything about them nope just lower level regular people that i know and just have a real conversation about some shit one of the one one of the questions that I seen that got the biggest foot traffic was, what are some insecurities about parenting? You are a father, mm -hmm. and what are some of your insecurities? Um, so, I mean, well, well, my daughter she's about to be twelve, so she's getting into a point where she's transitioning into Ooh, being a, a teenager, um, and things of that nature. You know, and I've been there. I've been that age and stuff like that too. And so I guess like one insecurity for me at this time is like, I don't want to lose that connection. Like I'm scared that I'm going to lose that, that connection, that trust. Um, she not wanting to open up to me or tell me things so I can be there for her. So that's a huge, huge insecurity for me that I, I, I think that a lot of parents have uh, with their children. And I can always remember, uh, even when she was younger, I've always had an insecurity of just not ever being able to feel like I'm doing enough. Like, no matter how much money I make, no matter, you know, that how was, hard I work. That yeah. was a crazy <laughs> one because I seen that somebody comment that is that one of my insecurities is, you know, I'm going to work, I'm providing, but then the time is lost. But if I spend time, then the money is lost. Yeah, and that's that's a lot of my situation is is that I work a lot. You know, yeah, see, you got a promotion. Yeah, I did, well, thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah, I've, I've been working with State Farm for uh, two years now, and then I was al always bartending on the side, you know. I've always been doing that. Um, so just working two jobs and just trying to, you know, make enough money so that I can, you know, live a certain lifestyle. She can have a lifestyle. We can have businesses in our family, you know, to leave behind to these kids, my grandkids, 
See, and, and future. And a lot of black people don't speak about that. That's a big one for me because a lot of people, and I actually stopped celebrating holidays because of that reason. Okay. All of those holidays, they just take our money, and then in right. in February they give us a little bit of money back. Mm-hmm. But that's to catch up on all the bills that we just spent all these all this money on for all these damn holidays. Well, they give the money back, but we also pay it every two it, weeks out of our check is, too. They take that, a good grip of amount of taxes out of my check every yeah, two weeks. Yeah, so. only for me. <laughs> to turn around and get a thousand dollars exactly or how oh did, yeah how, how did that happen i yeah. could have sworn i've been sitting up preparing y'all 200 per check i get paid every right. week y'all turn around and y'all divvy that up and then take taxes out of the tax income tax and then turn around and give me a thousand of the right. probably five thousand i've paid into it that's bullshit so not to go all the way left but i i think that's Im- important that what you said is like I, you don't celebrate holidays. Um, I I haven't celebrated holidays in years. Um, wow. I participate in holidays. Yeah, I participate. Um, but there's a difference between participating and celebrating. Yeah. Um, now, I know that um, we can call it what it is. Like you said, uh, holidays are an economy booster. And speaking with insecurities as parents, Christmas. Ooh, is God. I mean I I can remember when I did celebrate Christmas and I do participate with my family because my family has a Christian background and they've always wanted to celebrate Christmas and, and this and that and the third. Um, and just, you know, feeling like I'm not able to buy my family the gifts that I, I want to be able to buy them, or especially my child, I guess, if we staying on topic yeah. with my kid. Um, you know, just during those times, oh, if I get her a pair of J's, is that good enough? Should she have multiple gifts? Should she have multiple expensive gifts? It's like all these thoughts racing through your head as Hell a dad. Yeah. You know, you don't really know um, where the bottom line is, like, or where the where the finish line is. It's like, oh well, I'm just gonna do the best that I can, and and you know, it is what it is. Yeah, just to double back a little bit, leaving kids stuff behind. A lot of ki- a lot of parents, they can't do the saving up money so that I can leave my kid behind, leave a business behind, and then get them gifts for all of these thousands of fucking holidays right. too. And I've been over there trying to put my family up on game about we need to leave them something behind. Me, personally, I don't have kids, Mm -hmm. but I have a gang of nieces and nephews, and I do want to leave them something behind, and it kind of blows my mind that, like, we'll go out and we'll go celebrate all these holidays, but we not putting back no money for the so that they don't have to work that's the that's the real goal that we need to be thinking about like here in the black community is leaving things behind you i mean we see johnson and johnson inc we see you know um whatever and brothers or whatever and father and son or whatever and that's because they've left something behind for their kids while we going out making those companies richer we turning around and making our kids consumers instead Mm -hmm. of owners right and like I said, I've been trying to put my family up on game, and sometimes you have to sacrifice them them damn holidays. Yeah, Every no, holiday, seriously. I don't, I don't, I don't celebrate holidays anymore. Like you said, I participate. Right. But um, the amount of money that I would spend for Christmas, I put that in my family's bank. Okay, that's and see, that's smart. I mean, and that that's also teaching the the little ones the financial responsibility. You know, we're gonna save our money instead of going out on the twenty fifth of December and spend it all at Walmart. Exactly. You know, on toys and shoes and clothes and stuff that but you will only keep for a year and a yeah. half, maybe max, and then you're on to the next new thing. You know, because that's they how don't, life is. And then they don't even understand. Well, my mom was like, "Well, they don't understand why we're not celebrating Christmas." But they'll understand it when they're 20 years old, 25 years old, 30 years old, and they still have this land while mm-hmm. their friends are still working for a living. And they right. can literally work from the house inside of on their land and their house that's built from the ground up. Absolutely, because that's what life is, right? You have to work hard to get what you want in life. <laughs> so these kids can't just be handed everything, you know. They can't just be spoiled rotten. They got to learn how, uh, you know, the sacrifice they got to learn to struggle now my daughter she's been you know rather blessed that's in her great, life right there right huh? there stay right there that's great oh okay you can hear good yep. the, okay yeah well i was just saying that she's been rather blessed she didn't have to i didn't grow up bad i wouldn't say but i didn't have best upbringing in childhood as far as financial financial wise yeah. you know my parents were middle class you know they had bought a home you know things like that so i mean we lived life um, but there were also times when, you know, like after my parents divorced them, my mom was a single mom and she had three kids to raise and, you know, and we struggled and, 
And there was nights where we, you know, had those Roman noodle nights and, you know, <laughs> things like that. So, you know, and that and that sticks with me even into my adulthood because now, you know, I realize that, um, you know, I'm appreciative of the things that I have um, and, 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 and the money that I have and, mm-hmm. and the career that I have and all the things that I have going on. Um, it makes me appreciate it more. Yeah. Um, I'm glad that you brought up spoiled kids because that was another big one that got a lot of fucking foot traffic <laughs> on your shit yeah. about spoiling your kids. Well, I've been 11 years in the game, so I might know a thing or two yeah, about this yeah. parenting thing. <laughs> because that is one of the things that we do. We spoil them, and then they get out into the world, and they don't know what to do. They right. don't know what to do without the new Jordans. They don't know what to do without – the Jan Sport backpack they mm-hmm. don't which is like really kind of cheap on the cool but it's just the brand they don't right. they don't understand that oh well shoes are just shoes as mm-hmm. long as your feet warm right. a, a shirt is right. just a shirt as and long I feel as like we're losing that concept especially as black people like Oof. where did we go left to where we feel like we just have to uh, flood our kids with riches and gifts I think it comes from the the fact that we didn't grow up with so we never want to because you know how it is in the black community you go to a black school <laughs> yeah. you're gonna get your ass cold on right you're gonna get no, fired up enough. today right so absolutely and i think that we just don't want our kids to be made uh, fun of exactly and... but not understanding that yeah those kids that was wearing those jordans and all that stuff they probably not doing so good now because no. they didn't build that tough skin to know that a shirt is just a shirt as long as right. I got money in my pocket and shoes is just shoes as long as my stock and my credit or look good. or I mean yeah and 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 a lot of the times that's that's the misconception is we need to be teaching our kids that's your job as a parent for real when they get to a point now we make sure that they have the necessities like you said a, a warm house to live in um, a shower to bathe in you know food in your stomach yeah. The basics, you know. Now, if I want to, you know, give you gifts of, of extra things that I yeah. feel, you know, I only reward good behavior in my household. Thank you. So I don't just buy kids stuff, you know. Um, you got, you you passed your, your star test or whatever that end of school test. You know, all right, congratulations, let's celebrate. We'll go get you something, you know. We celebrate moments. We don't just, I don't just go out and decide one weekend that I'm just going to flood you with clothes and shoes. Cause life don't work like that. What have you done exactly. <laughs> for me as a kid? Like you, you, you complaining every time I ask you to wash them dishes and take out that trash and do this. And then you expect me to, you know, turn around and do that. But yeah, they, they, they got to find some way somehow to, um, you know, regulate gift giving, basically re- yeah. regulating the gift giving it. I've seen so many times and I have coworkers and stuff like that, that tells me, oh, I'm going to go get this for my son or my daughter. Okay, what have he done? I don't right. care that he's fucking four years old. Right. Like, you're grooming him to not only be independent to you, but you're grooming him also to just know that I, I only have to be here to mm. get things. Yeah. No no good behavior, no um chore doing, no nothing. Just, I want this, can you buy it? Sure. No, because when you get out in the work world, especially, I see a lot of entitlement in the work world with younger kids you know like an internship especially Mm -hmm. they complain about it that's exposure into the field that you need to be into so that you can do what you're going to do but they turn around and oh they ain't paying me oh they're not paying me enough Mm -hmm. listen here little young buck i was getting (laughs) paid motherfucking 625 an hour on my first fucking job and was making that shit straight right you're sitting up here not only getting like exposure but now they've so many entitled people have came into feels that now they pay them a little some some just so that they can have the internship and it's just too much entitlement with these younger kids that i be seeing people beat on a mama and you know just do crazy stuff cussing out but really low-key uh and i'm not trying to get too far off the subject but i think that that happened when they started taking church out of the schools Mm -hmm. and started putting that not a bill but oh well you know uh, cps when a kid could just literally call CPS on their parents. Okay. So you feel like that, that people like, like, okay. So you feel like the sense of, so first you, you said that you feel like a sense of entitlement comes from taking church out of the school. Why do you, why do you feel that that way? Well, it's not so much of, that was kind of like a sub 
combo. Like you mean but, like uh, the Pledge of Allegiance when they took like yeah, well they the took, word God out of that and and they took pr- and they took prayer out of school and all of that. They took paddling out of school. Now I'm not for like paddling or anything like that, but sometimes you gotta know that your kid low key right. bad. But I'm just saying like when they started taking all of the aspects of a village raising a kid because you can't be there 24 7 right you're working eight hours a day and you're gonna need someone that's responsible now put in the context a responsible parent or a responsible adult to also look after your kids usually those people are um people that you know are righteous in some sense you don't necessarily have to go to church to be righteous but it did kind of line you up for you know good doings right well good practices yeah, and i think that practices. even though like i um you know i have my own personal beliefs on uh what i believe in as far as the spiritual spiritual leader um but i do think spirituality is important i believe you got to believe in something yeah um there's so many different things to believe out there um christianity has a uh, you know, good and things about good things and bad things about it. (laughs) Um, I feel like there are good morals and characteristics that can be instilled into, you know, you as a person or your children. Um, So I think spirituality is important. Um, I kind of disagree on them taking it out of school. I think that it needed to be taken out of the education system. How come? Uh, Just because the education system and um, just the state alone, like politics and education, I just feel like we have to um, really stay focused on that, just that, that we're here to get an education. This is not your spiritual outlet. This is not where you praise your God. You know, that's distracting you from getting your education we're here to get the education that's what we're here to focus on same thing with politics we're here to talk about the politics it doesn't matter that you believe in this or that person believes in that we share this community so we need to focus on the community problems in the politics and not who we're praying to if that makes sense yeah um i i do think that that's a good point but it just all seemed like it went downhill and they just kind of opened Pandora's box on that once they took prayer up out of school and once they started getting away from that. I do understand that, yeah, you shouldn't be praising your God here in this school and it is a establishment for you to get an education and nothing more than that. If you want to pray, go to church. Right. But I'm just or I, I think I'm open to like, you know, if they have like um, groups the after school programs or different things yeah, like that, that could if be you want to join you know mm-hmm. diverse groups and things like that i feel like that's that's fine yeah um but bringing it into the classroom you just have so many people who believe in different things yeah that it's only fair to leave that out of the education system and yeah. you know yeah and, i uh, could see it i could see it that. from there um just individual groups but i just feel like yeah like like you said individual groups would be a good thing it just seemed like it just kind of went downhill and not to go way back but yeah i don't think that that's the reason why it's spoiled kids because there's bad people that go to church and it's bad people that do witchcraft and it's bad people that do you know it's bad in all of religion it's hard to say why kids have grown up into this this sense of entitlement i mean it may have always been there it is exactly what you said the 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 non-regulation of gift giving Right. That's where it came from. And then, then also, I think it's important, like, you got to factor in different things, too. Like, a two-parent household is Ooh, important. Yeah. You know what I mean? A father and a mother in the household. Or, you know, what, it, everybody is different. A father and a father or a mother and a mother. Like, a two-parent household is important. Yeah. You know, I feel like children need two parents. Yeah. And Definitely. although me and uh, my daughter's mom are not in the same household, we co-parent very well together to make sure that our daughter has you know both of our values and morals instilled in her and she doesn't walk around with this sense of entitlement yeah you're growing up a good little girl so that she's not getting mad at starbucks <laughs> that, workers that, look that's the goal <laughs> for real that's the goal but it's hard work yeah it is um as you have grown up of course you're um a mixed race black and white right yeah black and white nothing else no nothing else uh, no, <laughs> but <Mm-mm>. yeah <laughs> Um, you got like a little Enrique um, Glasses yeah. going on there. That's what I was going to say. Some people, <laughs> some people uh, will speak to me in Spanish. I know like sometimes at some of the bars that I've worked in, I've 
had people speak to me in Spanish, but not, no. And you'd be like, what, gin tonic? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'd be like, no. Nah, uh, Lim- limon? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah. You're on the wrong track. But yeah, <laughs> mixed with just black and white. So my uh, my dad is black and my mom is white. Mm-hmm. So um, a little bit earlier, you were saying that your mom had got divorced from your dad or mm-hmm. vice versa. Mm-hmm. Um, as a person of mixed race and your mom being, and I'm, I'm assuming that you stayed with your mom. Uh, yeah, what well, you mean, like, lived with her? Yeah, lived um, with her. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, so, mm-hmm. okay, so that's a fair assumption. We're going to assume that. Well, you just told me, so we're not, we don't got to assume. So what were some of the things that she did to feed your black side of you? Like, because, you know, you grow up in a white house, so I'm pretty sure, you know, um, your white in-laws would come over mm-hmm. and everything. How was one of those, what was something that she did to feed that other side of you, the other race of you. Right. No, I think it's funny because <laughs> it was actually um, actually already there from day one. So my parents were married for 11 years. Yeah. Um, uh, my mother moved uh, from California to Alabama, and that's where she, her and my sister's dad met. And then What a fucking um, culture yeah, shock and then from my, California yeah, to Alabama. I don't know. <laughs> And then she came from Alabama, Alabama down here to Dallas, and that's where she met my dad. Um, and then they had me, um, and that was in the early '90s. Um, but it's it's it was actually opposite. So my parents were married. Um, my mother has one brother, and he has two kids. So my white family is like small. My black family, my grandma on my black side, <laughs> she had like six or seven kids. So I have a, a bunch of aunts and uncles, and they all have children, who all have children. Damn. Uh, so it, it, you that, didn't even get a chance to be white. Yeah, yeah, I didn't even get a chance to be white. <laughs> you didn't feel none of that privilege at <laughs> no, all. No, 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 no. So yeah, I was always um, around my black people from you know childhood, growing up. You know, I mean, before we moved to Garland, when my parents divorced, that's when we moved to Garland. Um, but before that, we were, you know, we were staying in Oak Cliff, and so we were on this. That's where most of my family is from, Oak yeah. Cliff, Lancaster area. So that's where we were at. We grew up in the hood. You know, it is what it is, but, you know. So I, I just, like like you said, to answer your question, like, I've always been around um, my black family and, and exposed to black culture. Um, my mother, she married a black man, so I guess that's what she did. You know, <laughs> I think it's weird. The uh, yeah, because I did have a question about did you experience any racism in your family? Because yeah. everybody talks about racism on the like the white spectrum mm-hmm. where all white people are racist, but sometimes it can happen with colorism in yeah. your family. You know, you being the probably one of the lightest right. complexion ones, mm-hmm. and then you know on your black side they're kind of darker or what right. whatnot. Like, did you experience any of that from your the black side of your family? Like, oh, you soft, or you know, they always right. associate um, lighter skinned people with being soft and being timid, mm-hmm. and oh, you weak, right. and darker skinned people with oh, you strong and you rough and whatever. So, did you experience any of that? Uh, not with not with my family. Uh, my family was always really uh, nev- I don't know. My family never really made any of us feel out of place as mixed kids, and you know, in in that family. Um, now I do have um, my on my white side. My great grandmother and my great grandfather were racist. Really? So, yeah, and so that's a true story. Oh. So, and that's actually why my grandma on my white side doesn't have an a, have a relationship with her parents. Uh, although my great grandfather is deceased, but um, I think my great grandmother is still living. Uh, but yeah, they had they were racist. They had uh, you know uh, what what do you call that? I guess like. I'm trying to say it, see if there was a term for it, but you know how you have like a, I guess what they would call back a mammy. Yeah. They had one of those. Like, like my grandma had one of those, uh, like a black woman like a who was slave. there, you know, yeah, like a house slave. Really? Yeah. That's crazy. Right. And, and that that's my family. Longer. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so and you know, um, my grandma had um, t- was telling me about stories like when she was younger and how she would, um, you know, sneak off t- with her mammy to her house. And she wasn't supposed to go over there. Her man would cook her some pork chops. And she was like, that's the best food I ever had. <laughs> and then she was kind of like, but don't go home. Don't say we came over here. You can't say nothing to your mom and dad. You know what I mean? Like, keep it low key. So, 
you know, um, and then she also, I think, had like a, uh, at 18 years old, her for one of her boyfriends was like a black man. And that so is they such like, a crazy thing. Yeah, bro. so they like disowned, you know, my, my grandma and, and then, you know, kind of we never, and they, they have money too. So like we kind of like disowned from that side of the family. Like I don't have no contact with these people. I don't know these people, never met them. Facebook is incredible. Yeah, but these out. are great grandparents. So oh. I don't know if uh, at ninety some years old you probably have a, <laughs> a Facebook, but you'd be surprised. There's gonna be that one where they just like, I'm yeah, no, nah, exactly. <laughs> so I don't know, but I think it's I think it's crazy because you know she also went on to marrying a black man, although she didn't have mixed children. Um, my my grandma had, has white children. My mother and my 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 uncle. That's what you should do. You should reach out to the, the kids. You mean you talking about my uncle? Mm-hmm. Well, my uncle, um, he, I don't know if, if he has anything to do with them either because, like I said, these are my grandma's children. My grandmother's parents disowned her. Okay. For, you know, messing with black folks. Yeah. So, you know, um, he doesn't have no communication with them either or that side of the family or anything like that. And I'm, I'm okay with not, you know, I'm okay with that. You know, not them being who they were yeah you know and like i said my but my black family on the other hand was completely opposite like my grandmother on my black side of my family she loved my mom all my black family loved my mom they they thought my mom was like the best thing that ever happened to my dad um and they were you know they was upset when my parents had divorced it was it was hard for my whole family when when we had split up but my black let to answer that question my black family had never made me feel out of place it was more so black people in society and that's crazy <laughs> because yeah it's a big thing like the people only think that white people can be racist no. but in in retrospect it, it can be the opposite way too sometimes yeah like, i have to remind people sometimes like i mean i, I went to a friend's house the other weekend and they're having a conversation about um you know this whole everything that's going on with the you know black people uh black people and 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 white cops killing black folks and and stuff like that and so i have to remind uh our black people sometimes like i reminded them at this this get together i say you know hey y'all i am half white and my mother is white and my grandmother is white and i have a white uncle and i have a white aunt and i have white cousins and they have children and so i have white second cousins you yeah. know who i care about and i love because mm-hmm. they are my family and so I just think it's important for black folks to be to remember that it just because a white person is racist towards you doesn't mean you have to counteract that energy, you know? You you really don't have to. That's not who you are, you know? That's not who we are as black people, you know? And a lot of times you're going to see um, those white people out there marching with us and, exactly. and those white people out there protesting with us and, and wanting change and wanting difference. And we shouldn't alienate those people just because we got a few bad apples in the bunch. Yeah, um, because that's a big one. As all of this thing, all of the stuff that was going down, like I'm, I'm a truck driver. I go and pick up water and all that crap. And I was kind of in like Boondock, Texas. Like that's not <laughs> real estate, but it's just like you was probably the only black person there at the time. <laughs> yeah, it, it's mad early in the morning. Like no lights, no nothing. This shit's in the middle of nowhere. It's trailers yeah. in the back. Makes me think of that scene from Life with Martin where he's like, y'all got any nigga pies? I thought somebody was going to do it, bro. I thought somebody was going to do it. But, bro, so I'm over there doing my job, and this white man comes up to me, and um, he poses the question, hey, what are you doing? And it wasn't in an aggressive way or anything like that, and I seen him at the corner of my eye coming over Mm -hmm. because I have a headlight, it's dark outside, and I'm, watching my surroundings and uh-huh. shit because of all this shit that's going on and he's like hey you know um what are you doing or whatever and then he adds on just out of curiosity now because of all this stuff going on i could have been on some <laughs> black power shit and like what's this to you <laughs> right but i i had to realize that it's just out of curiosity my job is a very like weird job to have like most people don't know what i'm doing most right. people don't even think that I should be doing this job because why is a woman doing this very smelly ass job mm-hmm. type shit? And just like what you said, I I could have took it there, but I didn't because we have to realize that the media is making this into a race war. Mm-hmm. They're trying to counter each other against each other for whatever reason, I don't know. But I understand that he's just curious about my job and 
yes, he is white, but would I have reacted the same type of way and had that same animosity if he were black? Right. And I, I definitely wouldn't have. And if you don't look like you're from here, I mean, you probably stand out, not just because you're black, but I I mean, this town is small. I've never seen you around here before. Are you okay? What's going on? Yeah. You don't know what his intentions are. Exactly. So, and that could be good, you know, or that could be bad. Yeah, it could be know? bad, but the fact that, you know, I, I we all feel threatened by each other, right? Right. White people feel threatened by black people. Black people feel threatened by white people. And I just don't know where to feel. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) But that's the reality of it. Let's think about. Let's be real. There are biracial people who live in this world who we don't know what 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 am I supposed to say? You know what I mean? Like, of course, I know that there's uh, uh, injustice towards black people. You know, but now it's getting to a point where it's being injustice towards white people. It's injustice, you know, towards all people in a sense. And then. We got to find a way to come together and let this skin color stuff go. For real, for real. Because it really low-key is getting out of hand. Like, uh, a lot of stuff is really going on that I too much don't understand about, especially because we have white people out there marching, you know, with us. And if everybody was racist, then there surely wouldn't be them out there. I think, like you said, just a couple bad apples in the bunch. Eventually, they will fade out because there is becoming more mixed-race kids. And that does... I don't care what nobody say. That does soften. If if you have a grandfather, let's play like this. Your grandfather, he's he's racist or whatever. Not yours. Just saying, right. any white person. Well, he so, probably was, but say like, okay, your wife, <laughs> your your man, your um daughter goes out and have sex with a black man. They have a mixed kid. Mm-hmm. There's no fucking possible way in hell that yeah, you might be mad at first. But as that little boy grows up or a little girl grows up, you your heart starts to soften towards you would th- that You shit. would think so. Yeah. No, I, yeah, because uh, I mean, I've seen it too many times. I'm not a hundred on my on my on my biological grandfather or uh, my my mother's father. I know that they had some uh, family issues. Um, you know, why we don't really speak with him or why he doesn't really. I've never met him, um, or why he has nothing to do with my mom. Um, but you know. They, he ain't never tried to reach out. So, you know, at the end of the day, I don't know if it's because we're, you know, little mixed black children running around or if it's something that was more deeper between him and my mom that I just don't know about. Yeah. Um, but I hear what you're saying, but not everybody is the same way, you know? Yeah, I'm just saying that I would hope that it would, but the fact that, like, People are that hung up on skin they, No, color. they are. They so are. hung up. Mm-hmm. And the fact that anyone, black or white, thinks that they're the superior race. There's no superior race. It's just all skin color. That's right. what it's about. And, I'm, and, and then my whole thing is, like, with us as black folks, it's like we just have to um, – we, 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 we need to get off of this uh, feel sorry for us, you know, kind of mentality because at the end of the day, like – we have to always acknowledge our past. I'm not saying that the past does not need to be acknowledged, but we have to move forward as people. Uh, we already know that um, they put us in chains, they enslaved us, they destroyed our businesses, our Black Wall Street. We know all these things, and that they're not going to give us any of that shit back. Right. So how do we how right. do we how do we get our our culture back? How do we get us as Black people back good financially, spiritually, all that? And you know. Somebody asked me the other day, well, don't you think affirmative action is doing that? Yeah, affirmative action, especially when it comes to college, I don't really, you know, I don't I don't agree with it. And I'll say why, because, yes, we have had trouble with education as black people. We do we do need better education as black people. And I don't feel like um, it's equal from a white man and a black man in America to get the same education. Um, I, don't, I don't feel like there's equal opportunity there. I feel like white men uh, have an advantage to get into better schools, yeah, because, get better education. Yeah, because the, it all depends on your zip code. Right. So if your zip code where your school is is the taxes are higher, so everybody knows right. that school runs off of the taxes, your exactly. fire department, your um, police department. So if that's a higher living tax bracket zip code. Because you have slave master money passed down in your family. Yeah, so of course you're <laughs> going to get better education because you have the newest books, the newest software, the newest whatever, right. versus you know a zip code that is maybe poorer or um, 
less like people that are working just mid class jobs and right. stuff, they're not gonna get those things. So yeah, you do have some advantages or whatever over that. So I but just affirmative want, action, yeah, affirmative all, action, all affirmative, no yeah. affirmative action. All that does is say, hey, we feel sorry for you, uh, black folks, and y'all's education. You don't have to test as high as this white boy or this uh, Asian boy. You know, we'll let you in with a low test score. You just got to meet this requirement. But if you're a white person or you're an Asian person, especially Asian, I want to, you know, yeah, that's a big like, one. Yeah, I want to, you know, make you that can, stand out. You but can, you can especially if you're too. Asian. Um, you know, you are required to meet these scores at this level versus a black person who has to meet the, you know, meet these scores. And I don't feel like education or getting into college is based on that. You work hard, you do good in school, you get good grades, you get in a good school. Doesn't matter just because you're black, you, you know, deserve a college education. Everybody has to work hard in society. Everybody has to get somewhere in life. You prove your worth and you prove yourself into getting into school. It's to me, it's not fair that an Asian person would have to score uh, 300 to get into this school, yeah. but a black person would only have to score 100. And then that all that says to you is, uh, as black people is, all you have to do is be the bare minimum in life and you can get into these schools. You don't have to work hard to get into these schools. See, but the thing with affirmative action that really happened a long time ago, it was invented or it was you know passed because black people did have those high scores and still wasn't getting off into these schools. Right, right. But now they're just doing it just because, like you said, the bare minimum. We just need to make our school more diverse. It right. We need to make it look like <laughs> yeah. we care about black people. Or we That's care what affirmative about action should be doing. Yeah. Um, because test scores is not – that's not give it, you know. That's not gonna get us anywhere, you know. And we the, want. And the even crazier thing is that when you do take a black person that is really like not at the not the IQ but the testing level that they're supposed to be at, mm -hmm. and you put them in because affirmative action, those kids usually drop out right. because the curriculum is above yeah they can't even keep up in the school because they they the didn't test, get the education yeah. that these people that are here got. <laughs> yes because that's how college is set up a, when they could have went to a hbu right and got like and been the top of their class versus going to um harvard or whatever one of these mm -hmm. ivy league schools and then testing really low exactly it's like i don't need to be in harvard if you know my gpa is not up to par with a harvard degree no. You know, I need to be going to a school that can meet my education levels. Yeah, and that's really good out, so you can get those exactly jobs. and get the jobs that I need to get and stuff like that. And so, yeah, I, I like so that goes back to my point is like, don't feel sorry for us. You know, <laughs> we're educated, we're smart, we can have our own business. I think twenty twenty is the um, we're breaking all these stereotypes now. Yeah. You know, I like a big stereotype to me is um, fathers being absent in the black community. And I tell people this all the time. I say, well, I don't have a lot of black male friends who uh, are not good to their kids or in their kids' life. I probably wouldn't even be fucking with them if, <laughs> For sure, you know, if they you don't give a fuck about your kids. So myth right there. <laughs> um, there are a lot of black dads in their kids' lives uh, that love their children hug their children, you know, coach and guide their children, a lot of black men out there, you know. So that's one stereotype, one myth that needs to be debunked. Yeah. You know what I mean? Sure. Because My brother's a big one. He didn't he has like five kids and he takes care of all of them. No problem. They all love him. Right. Um, I see you, I see a lot of people that went to high, that I went to high school with all taking pictures and it's not just for fucking Father's Day. <laughs> no, it's, it's not just for Father's Day. If you go Day. in their profiles then it's there. Right. And, and, you know, it's not all about what you can see on social media, too. You got to put in the work. Um, but I but I do think, like, even sometimes us as black people, we believe our own stereotypes against us. Oof. You know, and sometimes we'll start to uh, look at our own, you know, and pass judgment. And, and, and that's not good. I know one thing that um, one thing I do see out nowadays is, like, people are more focused on black businesses and creating black businesses, but not just creating them, but shopping with black businesses as well, which I think is a great thing. Yeah. You know, Did you see that DFW um, food page? Yeah. Facebook? And you know who Whoa. told me about that? Booming. I'll tell you who told me about that was my mother. 
<laughs> Your mama just been down with the black community. Oh man, for a she done ordered her a Black Lives Matter shirt. She told me about this, uh, this that page that she was talking about. She was like, "Oh yeah, you got to go on there." She was like, "I'm shopping black this week," and you know she's just an advocate for that. But that's that's another story. But um, but yeah, just just stuff like that. And you know that's what socially conscious TV is. You know, before my sister had passed away, that was our goal is to shed light on black entrepreneurship, and no both matter of you what guys you guys were mixed. You, well, she thing? actually, um, her mother is mixed. Her mother was. Well, so what happened? Mixed. Is she just light, light skin like that? Yeah, well, her mother is mixed with black and white, I think. And then, like, I think they got some Creole in there. Oh, some, that's what it is, that French. Creole shit. Yeah. yeah. And so, um, and then her father is is, is, is a darker skin man. Um, but, yeah, she just came out light skin. But she's, I, mean, I guess she may have some kind of white in her, but she's a black girl for the most part yeah but yeah when we started that when we started that business um you know a couple of years ago right before she had passed away um you know that was our goal is that we want to shed light on people out here doing something you know black people out here doing something if you do nails or you got your own you know podcast or yeah. you know whatever you know that was our mission so and it still is you know it's been put off on hold but um you know, I'm I'm gonna bounce back <laughs> and get you back should. into my community because it's really important um, for that page in particular. You know, I had a lot of great ideas with that. You know, with the the charity five on five basketball game for the youth, uh, the boys that we were gonna do, but it just kind of fell through. Um, you know, when everything happened with my sister, that that was really what it was. Is like we had all these plans and we had all these goals and stuff put together, and then she passed away, and then after that, it's kind of like I'm here to try to figure this out on my own yeah that i mean i'm sorry about your loss i know it happened a little while no, ago no thank you i've healed yeah, yeah it's it's a lot especially when you have a partner and then you turn around and you don't have the partner anymore and then you try to figure out another fucking partner and <laughs> yeah that nigga tripping and yeah oh, no no shit. seriously and it's like in in this line of work too the entertainment is 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 where we're going with that and in this line of work it's hard to find honest trustworthy people who won't you know yeah who won't take your money and not do the work i've had (laughs) editors i mean i think we were talking about editors earlier and stuff like that like editing is frustrating because to find a good consistent editor they're either charging through the roof or you know they um can't meet your service level objectives of when you need stuff done and you know things of that nature right and that can be a lot for me sometimes being a dad a business owner working two jobs yeah. Still trying to live a life of my own, it you is. know what I mean. So it's been it's been a lot, but like that's why I come here to support you because you know that's what I do. I support my people. You know, I haven't seen you in years and years and years, but you told me what you got going on. I told you how I felt about it, and you know, I made it a priority to be here. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, and on time. See, and black, on time. Yeah, nah. I actually was uh, twenty minutes early. Yeah, mm-hmm. you downstairs. I was lost for about fifteen minutes, but yeah, <laughs> I may, I figured it out. Just downstairs roaming, yeah. but um, I do want to touch up a little bit about you've heard about them, you know, the rebel flag or um, the, what, confederate the, flag. Yeah, the confederate flag. They're making right. a big fuss about it and all the monuments right. and everything like that. How do you feel about that being is the uh, being uh a man of mixed race because you have right. this one side where of course your mom doesn't support that but if she did that's erasing their history but y- your his but that history offends your other side right no absolutely and i think that um for one it's just a flag let's you know let's just but what about the monuments the monuments um to me art is art you know and um if we come from a history of racial divide it should be shown you know it shouldn't be praised you you. know as a good thing Um, but I think a lot of white people are misconcepted on that and they think that flag means you know good white family values and and things of that nature but that doesn't mean the same for me or you you know Um, but I feel like at the end of the day um, I'm really big on rights and amendments yeah i don't care how you feel who you are uh whatever whatever um i believe in the first amendment of freedom of speech thank you um if i want to create a statue and it causes controversy and you don't like it 
that's on you. Exactly. Um, so that's how I feel about that. Because See, my thing is, I'm sorry to cut you no, off. No, you're okay. My thing is, we have to be very careful on the slippery slopes mm-hmm. of taking people's rights away because that's definitely right. You mm-hmm. just waving that flag around, they they can say the same thing about um, the, American the, bl- flag. It, the American flag. If um somebody black make a flag for us, they could say that. Oh, that's a sign of oppression. Mm-hmm. You tow down everybody business, and now you have this fucking flag that wasn't so good for all the businesses, right. but you know it's, it means something to you we got to be careful when we sit up there taking um people right to do something away mm-hmm. me personally i want a whole different way with it like you said it is history it's a shitty history mm-hmm. but it's history it happened that's why we're here because we, we be mad we're, we're we're mad because they're taken out of our education you know for our children so you know we got to figure out some kind of common ground here um and i feel like if we um uh, you know we want to put up anything that we need to put up to represent our black community we can do that as well you yeah, know we and counteract can. that yeah but me personally i th- i thought about a exchange yeah. they have a lot of our of our um <laughs> african ancient artifacts in their museum you can't even be uh, yeah can we get that back fam yeah. and then you can take, <laughs> they can take all those monuments down and put it in a museum because yeah. the whole thing is that that's history great that mm-hmm. is history and it shouldn't be destroyed everybody just wants to destroy everything but it's not going to be so great when it's on the other shoe i mean when the shoe is on the other foot it's not going to be great so leave them alone let them put them off in a museum so for all the white people that think that those statues are what they really stand for or whatever or what you feel they stand for right and be able to admire them that way Right, um, and I'm and I'm just not as sensitive as most yeah, people out there, neither. you know. So I don't want my answer to even come off like you know, because I'm still pro-black yeah. and I'm still for my black people all day, every day. But I just feel like certain things are not really worth the argument. Like it's really these white not. people, see, and I think that that's the the myth. Of, I think that we think that we're going to erase racism from our society, but that will never happen. You know, even if we can quiet the racists up, they're still going to be there. You know, we, we, we shut them up and silence them. They're still going to be there. They're still going to have their thoughts. Exactly. You know, you can't control people's thoughts. You know, that's something that you have of your own and I have of my own. And just every other person in this world does as well. And people should be able to think what they think or fly their flag Free or whatever. Or whatever they believe in. But I'm just saying, take. If if we gonna come to the common ground of taking stuff down, let them put it in a museum. Yeah. Let them put them in in a museum, yeah. just like they have all of our artifacts. Give us that shit back. <laughs> Y'all can take that shit, and then we have somewhere to look at that. And history is still valid. It's still there. It's protected by police officers and stuff like that. But so. let's tell the truth. You know, that's all I say. Let's tell the truth about those men that y'all are praising, you know? Yeah. Because a lot of those those men that we look up to uh, in our history books, those white men were not such great white men, you know? Yeah, but they were great to somebody else. Yeah. Just like Shaka Zulu or whoever <laughs> might not be great to a white person, but they're great to us. That just goes along with that free thinking, um, the right to freedom of speech and shit right. like that. It just goes onto that that whole thing just put it in a museum let them have it because that's what they want let them have their flag let them have their statues Mm -hmm. or like you said i think that was a good one let's counteract it let's put harriet tubman up let's put nat turner up Mm -hmm. let's put those people more black museums you know put those around society they should be you know around every every block we should have one in downtown i think it's crazy that we got a trap museum and not a black (laughs) that's just crazy to me art is art right yeah it's art no judgment passed yeah no, nah, a little bit. Well, art is art. Art, art gives you. Uh, I'm not an artist, by the way. Just uh, <laughs> let me make that clear. But I think art is is a good thing. I mean, it's freedom of expression. Yeah. You know. But you put a trap museum up before you put a black museum up, like, dude. That that <laughs> that that museum's gonna be older when we finally do get our shit together and we do. Say we like that. trap music. Yeah, we do like trap music. But I'm <laughs> like, damn, you know, if a, if 
oh, like years from now, you know, somebody is looking in the book and it makes it in the book and it's like, oh, this is what well, black we people feel was. like we're failing our ancestors. Yeah, black people. Because oh, this is what we were. This is what black people like to do. No, we're actually doctors and lawyers yeah. and mm-hmm. really smart people and scientists. And right. We just don't drink cough syrup out of the bottle. In a sense, we kind of do it like you say, our ancestors are injustice. We when we have, uh, you know, brother Martin Luther King and sister <laughs> Rose Parks, and she's sitting on the bus and. They got that downtown. Yeah. You see how many people be sitting down on that house? (laughs) Oh, really? (laughs) (laughs) Where is that at? It's downtown, like, near the West End in Dallas, Texas. Oh, okay. I don't think I've seen that. Yeah, just look up on Rosa Park in downtown Dallas, and she's sitting on a bench. Waiting on the bus. That's so fucked up. (laughs) Look, no, it's not. It's, It's her story. I mean, it is, but damn, she couldn't have been standing up. She couldn't have been. You know, giving them the business. <laughs> she just sitting on the bench. I'm yeah. just, they ain't doing all black people. They ain't doing all black people far wrong. No, nah, but like I said, like art is the freedom of expression. Um, you know, people people should be able to have that freedom of speech. So I mean, at the end of the day, I don't really find offense in the statues and flags like most people do. That's yeah. just my personal opinion. Same. That's why I feel with it. How much time we got, Sean? Ten, Ten minutes. One last question. I'm glad I saved this one for last. Okay. <laughs> okay, so we was over there talking about your your mom and everything with the community or whatever. Like, where have you been in the protest? It seems like you're kind of slapped dab in the middle of everything, like, going on in the protest and everything. Have you been to one yet? No, I don't. I haven't been to one. Uh, for one, with the protest, um, I've never really been a protester. That's just not really my thing. I don't really feel like some. I feel like sometimes they're not safe. You know what I mean? Things get out of control. And, um, you know, there are people out here who are brave um, and want to get out there and make a change and make a difference. Um, I just, that's not my protest. I, my, my, the marching uh, doesn't do it for me because there'd just be too much stuff going on, you know. But, I do try to use my social media presence to, you know, state my opinion, but I don't really like getting into all the politics of of what's going on. I mean, to me, I feel like this kind of stuff has always been around. We've always had police killing people, police killing black people in particular, you know. Um, The gentleman that had passed away that had his, uh, that police officer, uh, you know, knee on his neck and caused him to suffocate and, you know, die, um, that he's not the first story. You know, yeah, one happened in Paris. It's con- it keeps continuing to happen. It's always been happening. It's been happening before me and you even been here and been alive, you know. And I I don't think protesting is gonna change anything. So what have you been telling your daughter, um, about really what's going on because she's younger. Um, she kind of probably she understands what's going on, but not to the extent. Mm-hmm. And you know, she's basically considered black, you know, right? At this yeah. Point. No, I mean, I tell her the truth. Yeah. You know, I tell so her. So, what, what are some what, of the things that you tell her? Well, I tell her what it is. You know, I mean, at the end of the day, um, you know, this is not to me when it comes to the police and civilian. It that's not a a, a race thing. I feel like um, it is a divide between police and their communities. You know, even even white people, black, Mexican, you know, Asian, Indian, no matter what race you are, you've all, all of us have come encounter with police officers. And because y- you even being black, you might even get fucked. Uh, a, a police officer who is black might come and fuck with you. You know, you'd be your own people sometimes. Hell yeah. So I, at the end of the day, I don't feel like it's a race thing when it comes to the police brutality. It's just what it is. It's police brutality. These police officers are poorly trained, is what I tell my daughter. And they don't have enough training and um, they're not competent to do their job. You know, they, they, they do their job with their emotions. You know who? Oh, I need to you know make a point, or I need to um, show sh- show that um, I'm this authority figure, and I'm here, and you're here. When actually it's the opposite, because they work for us. Because you they work get for us. Taxpayers' money. They you pay your tax fucking money. salary money. And you're not supposed to do your job as a police officer, um, you know, based on emotions. I mean, I'm in insurance, and I don't do my job based on emotions, and I hear sob stories left and right. Until you clo- until you hang up the phone <laughs> and say, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, you know, it is what it is. And, you know, so I've even had my own share of, um, you know, police fucking with me and racially profiling me, you know, back in my younger days. So, you know, it it it's it hits home for me. I, I've been through it. 
I know friends. I have friends, my brothers who have been through it, you know. And so I tell my daughter what the truth is, and it is what it is. There are police out here killing niggas. Uh, <laughs> it is what it is. Shit, that is what it is. Well, I'm happy that you came through. Happy that I'm I could happy have to you. Be here. And man, come back as soon as you start your shit. Back up. Come yeah, no, we we'll do so. Uh, yeah, we we'll have to um, get together off off record and 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 come up with some some good good stuff because. I feel like you you, you got a creative mind, you know what I mean, and and I have a creative mind, so we'll get together and we'll we'll try to do some work this year and try to make some stuff happen because um, with my platform, um, it's all to me. It's all about you know marketing and getting those numbers up and getting those viewers. So once I have those viewers up, then the content can be produced like I want it to be produced. Oh man, you'll be fine. You're all light skinned and whatnot. Nah. Man, come on. <laughs> Look, come on. <laughs> well, thank but you though. I appreciate you having me on here. Go ahead, plug in anything that you want to plug in. Okay, yeah. Um, if y'all want to follow the Facebook page, it's Socially Conscious TV. Um, that's where you can find me or you can follow me on Facebook. Will Tyrell Norris is my uh, Facebook profile with all my controversial conversations that she mentioned. <laughs> but yeah, y'all can follow me there. Okay, this is an hour with Crowder. Me, Crowder. Like, share, subscribe, comment, ding the bell so you can get those notifications and we can beat the algorithm of YouTube. Once again, thank you. Peace. We're out.